Alrighty, so this is a overview of the game Ancient Warfare, the Han Han Di Dynasty, um, which its Chinese name being Han Ge, which literally means raised arms. So um, before we start, I'm just gonna quick let you know that this is a early access title. Um, I have found a lot of bugs personally myself, but many has been fixed at the time as of the time when I'm making this video. So develop, the devs are definitely like actively working on this game. A lot there has been like 10 or so patches already since the launch two weeks ago. And in its current state, it's definitely playable. Of course, it's not a smoothest experience. Like there is a lot of issue at hand, with, especially with the combat. However, it's a playable game for its price as well. And you can check out more prolonged gameplay footages of me playing this game in my past live streams um, if you want to a better idea of how this game plays in the long run. So uh, what is this game, TLDR? It's a hex grid total war um, with a story campaign. The story campaign essentially tells you of the... Um, I'm not going to start it here, I may. Let's just start it. The story campaign essentially just tells you uh, the tale of like the Chinese version of Leonidas, uh, which like Gong Gong and his like uh, army defended uh, a settlement with wars for an entire year, um, and before against the Huns. So, uh, yeah. And then they, after a year or so, uh, they were relieved of the siege, and only 13 of them were able to return home. Like they were outnumbered by a ton. I don't know how much. Like the Huns had like 20k or something. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Um. I don't think I will be. Like the story campaign, it has a lot of cutscenes like this, and there is also a lot of that dialogue. However, the overall length is pretty short. It's only like two hours or so. Like it features like three or four combat with a bit of dialogue, and that's it. So gonna skip this. Wait, can I skip it? Wait, I can't. Okay, I cannot stop the cutscene. All right, let's just let it play, I guess. Um, yeah, you can see like we have waste dialogues and a dialogue story title, and I'm just gonna skip over these. Um, a decent tutorial, I will be honest. Like it tells you how to move around the map. Also, this is a decent opportunity to let you guys see how it's a hex grid on, on the over map. So you can see here, hex grid. Okay, um, next we're gonna talk about the graphics a bit. The map, it's Decently looking, I would say. Uh, the sprites on the buildings, decent as well. It's not amazing, like it's passable. However, the art style is what I believe to be the best thing ever for this game. As you can see, the sprites, everything is highly stylized, like, uh, which is something I really like about this game. Like the art style they have, they have went with is something I really, really like. And it just looks really good, right? Well, to me, I guess. I have a lot of culture oh, bias going on. So the story mode will give you a decent um, uh, tutorial of the campaign, which I'm not going to go over. I'm going to return back to the um, other mode, the sandbox mode, and show you guys the factions a bit. Uh, for the factions, the biggest difference between them is whether they are the Hung Empire or they are not. Because uh, only the Hung Empire gets a special, a truly special unit, uh, which are the armored cars and the trebuchets. Everyone else, it's just a bit more stylized units. And everyone, all the factions, of course, has their faction traits. Um, not really a surprise and every faction also has their special characters so yeah every special character also gets their own skill tree which i will go over a bit later and we have two uh scenarios one of them is like uh, a more realistic one and the other one is where everyone is just surrounded by bandits and nobody has a large amount of territory occupied in the beginning there's a third scenario which is still unlocked that's in development and we're gonna go into the game now uh, a save that i have been playing in my live streams 
Alrighty. Um, yeah. Um, so the graphics, uh, the art style, I would say, is really good. Uh, everything else, passable. The units and the models, which we are gonna see once we go into combat, is not really good. I will be honest about that. Okay, now to go over the strategy level, as you can see on this view, we have our map. Uh, the over map is really pretty. Again, the art cells you have went with, I'm really happy with. As you can see, we have a lot of empty spaces in the south. This is um, content they are actively working on right now. So they are adding in like these southern regions and there's a bit of territory here that will be added as well. So the map is gonna be, f once fully complete, we'll f have these areas in finished essentially. And we have the deserts here, which well are just deserts. <laughs> Um, or yeah, just nowhere essentially. And now let's go through our resources. We have food, we have wood, we have uh, our gold, which are pretty basic resources. I'm not gonna go into too much detail in what they do. And for our cities, um, we have different, yeah, every single city has their number of tiles, which is pretty much how far can this city go, like what can how big can this city get and um every single tile has a resource type so for planes uh we have you can build farms on it or you can build villages on it or you can build uh set defense settlements on it for the silk road you can only build the silk road buildings on it for forestries you can build either the forestry buildings which grants you wood orchards which grants you um, either a bit of food and a bit of money, or you can build um, way stations, which gives you a lot of money based on your populations, or just a um, temple that in gives you a bit of money. And on rivers tiles, you can build like fisheries, you can build markets, you can build way stations as well. So yeah, um, like uh, there's also other kind of tiles like steppies steps which you can build like uh, livestock livestock farming and stuff so yeah a lot of different tiles every city has a set um, number of tiles and like every city has their own different set of tiles so you will have to mix and match to maximize your income you know, for every single city there's also different types of bonuses on the buildings as well so yeah um, there's a bit of depth to it and uh, I can appreciate and also when you conquer it, like uh, in when the game starts, um, it, all the cities will only start with like three or two tiles unlocked. So to unlock more tiles, you will, you will need to spend wood on it, and spend wood and pop and public order on it to unlock more tiles. Um, as we can see, every city has their own pop. Here it's six pops out of twelve, pop and pop limit, and it will grow in seven turns. So yeah, um, pop can will either expand cities for you or it will be used for recruiting more troops. As you can see, I have five pops here. If I recruit a troop here, I have now only have four pop. If I disband the troop, oh, and now my public order also decreases by one. However, if I disband the troop, I will get back my public order and I will get back my pop. As we can see here, 5 and 64 now, uh, compared to 4 and 63. So, um, this is decently interesting. And another thing of note is that uh, uh, due to the how the equipment system in this game work, which I will cover a bit later, like, if you are... Um, if you have the equipment already in your treasury, Recruiting a troop will not cost any resources. It's only when you are trying to recruit a troop that you do not have the equipment for that it will cost more resources. As you can see, like recruiting these troops will, didn't cost me any resources. However, uh, if I keep recruiting it, now it will tell me, oh, I do not have the sword and shield which is required to recruit this troop. Well, now as you can see, uh, if I stay keep uh, continuing on with the recruitment, uh, my wood will drop to 212, right? Now it drops to 183. The, the resources are actually used to, well, craft the necessary equipment to recruit the troop. So that's a pretty interesting and decent change, I would say. And canceling it will still give me the refund, which is nice. All right. Mm, so yeah. 
Uh, so that's the resources. Um, the balance between the buildings are still a bit out of whack right now, but it's getting worked on. Maintenance for high tier troops are also pretty high. Um, so yeah. There and then we have the tech tree, which, well, it's a tech tree. Uh, if you played Total War 3 Kingdoms, you know exactly what this is. It's, <laughs> it's, it is a Three Kingdoms tech tree. Um, however, one thing of note is that, um, uh, I will cover this a bit later, actually. Okay, so we have the tech tree, we have our internal affairs, which is like positions that you can assign to people, which gives your character stats. Uh, speaking of characters, they, Every character has their own set of skill tree. The unique characters, not the generic characters. Generic characters just get generic skill trees. Unique characters get their own set of skill tree and their own special abilities. Except like such as like Gengong, which is the well, the strongest general in this game as of now. Uh, he has a special skill which have which is a I'm just gonna translate it as guidance hero, which essentially fire. It tells all the ring troops of your army to fire at a single location and it does a ton of damage a scary bunch of damage and he also has his own skill tree which well does stuff um uh, and now let's talk about so that's characters and let's talk about army movements so to have an army come out of the city you have to do I have any troops? No, I don't. <laughs> okay, uh, anyhow, it, let's to have an army come out of the city, it, let's assume I have troops here, right? I have to assign a general to it. The generals can be assigned from anywhere, as you can see, like... Um, no, this doesn't work. Um, that just made him governor of the city, so he can't be assigned anywhere. But normally, like, generals can just be... Uh, you can have generals... To, uh, come out of any city, like depart from any city, and yeah, you know, as you can see, it just works. Um, and once a general is leading an army comes out of the city, um, he can just march to another place, right? And this is where things are still, like where balance work are still are required, because you can see, um, I have this general who just marched into this city, and when he comes out, he is again at full movement. So I can have him march to, to the next city. So uh, essentially, like you can go through the entire map like this if you have it high enough movement. However, um, there are some places that you will not have enough movement to go. Like as you can see, it's, he doesn't have enough movement to go to either of these two cities but for the most part if your if your troops have high enough movement so if your troop is made of of cavalry they can traverse the entire map in like a turn or two um for now uh i think that's gonna be changed in a bit later uh so now let us move on to army management so uh especially just our units um as you can see we have the stats and stuff, which I will cover later, but the most important thing about the units are their weapons, their armor, their boots. Well, that's not really important, and if they are equipped with a horse or not. And as you can see here, if I equip this guy with a horse, boom! He suddenly becomes a horse archer, and now he has another, sets of, another set of traits. Now he has the horse archer traits. If I remove the horse, boom, he is a... Um, <laughs> He becomes, he is now again a normal archer again. If I give him a javelin, now he's a skirmisher. If I give him a great sword, now he's a, well, great swordsman. Uh, if I give him a spear, now he's a spearman. If I give him a crossbow, boom, he's a crossbowman. So yeah, that's the most interesting thing about troops in this game. Like troops, uh, the like what defines the unit is essentially the gear uh, and nothing else. So the troops that you have in the beginning of the game um, will and have leveled up by a lot. Like as you can see, this guy is level four already. He has a hefty bonus to his HE. Can be re-equipped and improved into higher tier troops. And that I think is the really big highlight of the game. That it's pretty original. I think not a copy of Total War anymore. 
because a big issue I have found with Total War is that like um I have all these veteran militias, all these veteran Ashigarus, and in the end game I had just had to disband all of them, which is unfortunate because well I have elite troops now. But with this game, like unlocking elite troops not only unlocks the ability to recruit them, but also unlocks the ability to like craft their equipment. So instead of while well, disbanding your uh, militias, the soldiers who have uh, who has been fighting for you since the beginning of the game, now you can re-equip them with just better equipment, and now and they will just become higher tier troops. I don't have tier two equipment here with me right now to show you guys that, but they do become tier two troops if you give give them tier two equipment. And I only have like a tier two crossbow that I have managed to loot off the enemies. Um, so yeah, this is really interesting. Also, um, as you can see, if I give him a tier two crossbow, his maintenance cost, which is now seven, increases from seven to forty one. So the unit's maintenance costs are also determined by their. Um, equipments which is really interesting uh that also means like oh if i am on a march and i do not need um my troops to be fully equipped i can just equip them with lower tier stuff like if i'm marching them from my capital to like the front lines i can just equip them with a horse and equip them with some low tier stuff so they don't cost as much and once they get to the front lines they can just equip their better armor and stuff which is a really interesting thing, mechanic to keep in mind as well. Also, uh, your units have a the units battle history on them. So as you can see by clicking this small arrow here, I can check on the history of the unit, like how many um, how many troops have they killed in past combats. Like, and this troop has killed like six thousand seventy. 761 dudes before, and he now has a trait called Thousand Man Slain. So he gets 15% increase to his arm piercing damage. If they have killed more than 10,000 men, while well, they get a um, trait called 10,000 Rival, which grants them 15 defense, which, which, which is essentially armor, and 15% movement speed. So this, so it really incentivizes you to keep around your veteran troops and make the most use of them which adds a lot to the immersion of the game i would say and now um, let's go over the troop stats so for troop stats in this game we have armor we have ranged defense which is a presented uh, which is we have range defense we have charge defense we have movement speed uh, attack damage armor piercing damage uh, attack speed and attack range charge and ammo uh, ammo. Um, all the stats you should be familiar from Total War. Um, armor is just a percentage decrease to the enemy's long armor piercing damage. For ranged defense, it's just a percentage chance to block off ranged attacks. However, you might notice that in this game there isn't a stat called melee attack or melee defense. No, there isn't. Um, the damage caused by like higher melee attack or high uh, like higher tier troops, it's just purely based on um, the weapon damage and their attack speed. So yeah. Also, um, as we can see, uh, in terms of weapons, we have um, a, a different set of weapons. And in terms of armor, we also have the heavy armor and light armor. So for heavy armor, of course, you get higher HP, which as you can see, light armor gives 20 HP and heavy armor gives 35 five HP and light armor only gives 10 defense and five range deflection and heavy armor gives 20 defense and 10 ranged. So heavy armor is just like more survivability. However, heavy armor also decreases your attack speed by a lot. So as you can see here, if I go into light armor, I get like minus 2.7 off my attack speed. Well, my attack cooldown, I guess. Um, so for your off offensive troops, like your range units, your shock troops, you will actually want them in light armor just to have their damage boosted. For boots, um, there is only one kind of boost right now, just with higher tiers. So it's just a flat upgrade for now. Although I think in the game files, there is all already like uh, heavy boots and light boots in the works. So I'm interested 
to see how that works out. And for horses, like, yeah, if you put people on horses, they become under the troop. So if uh, right now, if I have like, um, like by changing the armor they all become different troops right as you can see here the sprites change as well by chain by putting them on horse so if i put a javelin on oh i don't think yeah there isn't a special sprite for javelins and great swords but if i put like a spearman on horse now he becomes a shock cavalry if i put a if i put a swordsman on horse now he is a sword and shield calf if i put a crossbowman on horse now he's a crossbow calf if i put a well yeah. For now, like uh, great swords and um, uh, for now, oh oh, they actually added a limit, this, which uh, which d doesn't allow you to to put great swords on horses. Well, that kind of sucks. Great swords and horses are kind of like really strong. So yeah, you can't put uh, great swords on horses anymore. It seems or javelins on horses, which is. Unfortunate, um, yeah. But yeah, every other combos work, and you, then you have also the variation between heavy and light calves, heavy, which is also interesting. I should move this guy back because I need to well fight with him. So to show you guys the combat, um, so let us load here. So yeah, that's pretty much the strategy view. Um, everything else, it's pretty simple. Diplomacy, it's almost non-existent as with total war games um of course i will admit like three kingdoms does have a decent diplomacy <laughs> but that's for total war standards as still and so i'm just gonna go again quickly show you like diplomacy it's really really fun like rudimentary so nothing you have like several treaties non-question uh, military access map sharing and then we have like um, alliances and wars. Really, really rudimentary, like nothing special here. Um, and we have also faction lists, like we can see the, uh, the, the generals of other factions, which is interesting. And yeah. Um, and that's pretty much that for the strategy map. Now let's go into combat. I'm just gonna attack the ward set, ward settlement here and show you guys what's going on in combat. So, uh, for combat, um, I'm just gonna talk about it a, a bit for one now, cause yeah. Um, so it's paced a lot faster than your traditional Total War due to how accurate and damaging your, your range units are. As you can see here, my army is composed of mostly range units. Why is that? Well, range units are OP, <laughs> so that's why I have a lot of them. And uh, controls are also a bit funky right now. Um, as you can see here, like normally when you drag a formation out, you expect there to be dragged out, right? Well, it doesn't happen in this game. And if you drag a formation in, you expect it to be dragged in, right? Well, it doesn't happen in this game. If I select everything, I single click them. Well, you will expect them to like stay in the same place, right? Nope, they will push each other out. Like uh, formations and stuff, everything is a bit weird right now. I hope they improve upon this a bit later, um, especially the collisions, which I'm gonna talk about a bit later. Um, uh, the controls of course, I don't think it's gonna be a long-term issue. Like this game is capable of having different formations. As you can see here, I will just speed it up. Like the, this game is capable of having like different formations. If I tell them to go into a straight line formation, they actually do. It's just that uh, in the deployment, they don't, which eh, I don't understand why, but it's so, if that's so, then that's so. Um, also, combat is a lot more abstracted from Total War. Um, calf charges are not like simulated by physics. They are rather simulated by charge points, which I'm not going to explain it right now. Um, it's not a really good simulation. I'm just going to say that. It doesn't even need you to ch actually charge. You just click a button and stuff just fly around you, which is can be weird. Um, so combat isn't the strongest suit of this game i will be honest uh however oh yeah this is also a decent time to look at the unit models not really detailed like 
just your standard like not like it's like I, I don't know like medieval tier of unit models I never played mid medieval 2 or something like the medieval title so I don't know <laughs> but it's as you can see just pretty basic uh, and however it is stylized though like it does have its own style which is good I guess so, um, like it didn't go with the no style approach which is which it's gonna be really bad which is gonna look really bad okay um and also there's no infantry infantry charge stats the only charge stats that is that exists it's your melee uh it's your cavalries so essentially it means that like except for your cavalries cavalries um there is no point in charging like it's just better to hold on as hold out in position and sit there like no incentive to charge your infantry at all um and lastly unit collision it's i wrote a an entire section on this um i don't think i will read it over i'm just gonna show you how weird it is so yeah um as you can see here these two troops actually kind of moved if i let me just do this a bit like change it up a bit and show you <laughs> again so, if I try to move a unit through another unit, room, it pushes it aside. <laughs> um, yeah, this is not really how you expect unit collision to work, right? So, essentially, what, like, just by looking at this, you can you kind of guess what's going on? Well, I kind of figured that it's just. I think I've kind of figured out it's because uh, there is no model level collision. So like e each individual levels, each individual models actually doesn't collide with each other. So as you can see here, my models moving through another model that isn't really slowed down or anything like Total War titles do. Like when you move a unit through another unit, they kind of slow down, right? However, in the center of every single unit, there is a collision bubble. So, you, when the center of a unit collide with another unit, it will push them aside. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not the best simulation of troop movement, I will have to say. Um, and yeah, uh, this will cause a lot of issues. Um, a lot of tactics that you can use in Total War cannot really be used here, um, which is unfortunate. Like, yeah, uh, like as you can see, like moving through a lot of troops doesn't matter. Like, it's the only thing that matters is if you are moving through the center of another unit or not. If you're not moving through the center of another unit, there is zero unit collision. If you're moving through the center of another unit, you start pushing people around and, well, uh, you get slowed down. <laughs> so yeah, uh, unit collision is just kind of ridiculous right now. But uh, yeah, uh, so another, uh, another outcome, another consequence of this kind of unit collision would be that um, there is no malice to unit stacking. So if all my swordsmen just form like a huge blob, right? If I have all my swordsmen form like a huge blob and attack a single unit, that unit will be destroyed in seconds. Oh my god, they're shooting at me. Uh, that unit will just be completely obliterated in seconds. Not really in seconds, but really quickly. Because, well, like, there is no unit level collision, model level collision, so there is no models for unit stacking. So when I stack five units on a single unit, they just do like five or four times the damage, and boom, that unit is gonna die five or four times as fast. And that's the case with calf as well. There's like zero calf collision, so five calves charging at one unit will destroy that single unit that's getting charged at. Um, so yeah, mm, that's pretty much that. And also another thing that's a bit abstracted is the uh, terrain and rain, like high ground mechanics. So sitting on high ground actually doesn't really give you an um, like, and like, 
well, I shouldn't say sitting on high ground. I should say like, what like the high ground advantage is dictated by if you are sitting on high ground or not. Which is if your unit is sitting like on a piece of land that's just called high ground. So if your unit center is centered on that type of terrain, it will actually get a buff called high ground, which. Uh, which these guys get is actually it's a plus 40 to re attack range so um if you're sitting like on an incremental hill you don't really get like plus 20 attack range you just get nothing and if you are on the high ground all of a sudden then boom you just get 40 attack range all right so even if you're shooting like um if even if like two units are on even terrain as long as both of them both of them are on the high ground. Both of them will get high ground advantage. You can check my high, uh, how high ground work in my streams. Like I have been playing a lot of battles with high ground on, like sitting on high ground because that gives you a huge advantage. But it's really kind of ridiculous how like, well, <laughs> um, it's just a buff instead of like modeled after actual terrain. And which you can see here, boom, they have like 40 attack range on me and I get obliterated here. And now to shoot back, well, this general, as I have said, is the strongest general in game, and boom! <laughs> he can have every single range units in your army fire a shot <laughs> at a place, at, a, at, like a, at like a single point on the place. So yeah, that did a lot of damage. So combat, mm, not really good. Nothing is really, Simulated, everything is pretty abstracted, um, and this is kind of the biggest limitation to this game. Like, it's trying to be a challenger to Total War, like with this, with the formations, with the unit movement, with the mo individual models. Um, it's trying to be a challenger to Total War. However, it's not really like. I can see the effort that's been put into this game to try to challenge the whole. Like, for the crossbowmen's, right? They get a special... They have a special ability called uh, Flat Shot, which if they are on equal or higher ground than the enemy, they will shoot a... I am going to sacrifice my channel so you guys can see. They will not arc their shots, they will just shoot flat. Like, as you can see here, the archers are arcing their shots, right? here the archers are arcing their shots however since these crossbowmen are on like higher ground than me they will shoot flat into my uh the units they're attacking which deals a bit more damage so like this is a detail that they actually put in so essentially if you have your crossbow unit on like uneven terrain so if this guy, say like here right as you can see here, if this crossbow unit is on uneven terrain, this end is a bit lower than the other end. This, like the the end, the half that's on the lower end, will actually shoot, will actually arc their shots, and the half on the higher ground will actually shoot flat. So, like they have individual uh, models terrain effects going on. Like they are, uh, like they do have, like they're. It, their models are actually independent. It's just that like they didn't go the entire way with the unit collision stuff. I'm assuming it's due to processing powers, optimizations, and stuff like that. However, like there is definitely a lot of effort that I can see right now being put into this game. I just don't think it's currently in a state right now to truly say be a challenger to total war i do hope it's getting improved and in the future it does get better and stuff but yeah that's what it looks like in the current state um and yeah that's pretty much that also 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 um i forgot to mention uh shooting from like beneath wall shooting beneath wall to like um shooting up to a wall is actually really really bad for you like um if i try to shoot the unit on the wall i actually don't really do a lot of damage because um the wall will block a lot of shots so like the game has a lot of stuff modeled like the trajectories in each in the individual projectiles are all actually all like 
objects. They will be blocked, they can be dodged, uh, just like in Total War. Like, as you can see here, my straight shots actually will damage the guys behind the walls. And not every single shot will be able to hit. Like, as you can see, boom, I am able to hit dudes behind the wall. Like, a lot of stuff is done really well in this game. However, just the a lot of the combat is well... Mm, oh yeah, controls are still a bit funky right now. Um, just that, like, I think the biggest issue of this game remains its collision, unit collision thing, model collision. If they manage to, to fix this, I think this game is gonna be a really good potential replacement for Total War, at least for people who are a bit interested in this time period. Um, the combat, once they tweak stuff a bit, is gonna be decent. Uh, and if they do manage to fix the model level collisions, then this combat will actually be called good. The AI, of course, is nowhere smart. <laughs> um, the sieges, of course, are not like good at all. Like the you, the only way to go through a siege is to just break the wall open and then hit their like main settlement, which I'm gonna do right now. And also, this will be a chance to show you what happens if I try to for push a unit through like another unit. Oh yeah, this is a combat. Like, um, as I said, it's a bit stylized, but it's decent looking. Like, if you are looking from afar, it looks actually pretty good. It's just that when you like zoom in, it looks really bad. Because uh, the units are not really nice looking and the animations are not really good as well. So yeah, um, in general, this game is decent, but definitely a lot w more work can be used put into this game like especially with the mech uh especially with the or the party card especially with the uh collisions and stuff so yeah that's just that um ancient warfare uh the han dynasty like the AI is actually semi smart about this like they know if i'm trying to force my units through to like hit their hit their uh, main building, and they are kind of trying to block me. Oh, oh yeah, oh, as you can see here, um, back flanking is also modeled by a buff, like not an action, like it's not like, mm, yeah, like I actually get deep, I, I get like a single deep buff when I get flanked. Oh no, there isn't smart at all. Like as you can see, <laughs> like me going straight for their. Um, Town Hall, going straight for the Town Hall, didn't trigger them to like go defend the Town Hall, it just triggered them to, well, fight my troops, as you can see here. Now I'm just gonna track my troops. I never really siege this way, I always just use range to attrition them. So, but yeah. Um, ancient Warfare, the Han Dynasty. Interesting game. Um, Interesting game. Interesting game. And that's it. Go back. Yeah. See how powerful the range units are in this game? Like, um, just, just watch as this unit get completely obliterated walking into my range firing lines. Like, just watch as they completely die off. Like, once they approach, they just... just Insta killed, insta killed, and also you can see like the units are reforming themselves. But yeah, <laughs> um, that's what it's meant by how this game's combat is really, really fast paced. Like things just die in like a couple seconds. That's, that's all. That's that. Mm, and that will be the end of this video, I guess. Die, you do. And flash shots, kills. Flash shots outside of like their um, stat statistical advantage, which does like a bit higher armor piercing, also have the benefit of, of a fatter trajectory, which means their hit rate on moving target is a lot higher, especially if the unit is moving towards them. Like both firing a moving unit doesn't really hit very often. Like the the accuracy on both is actually pretty bad. However, if it's fire if it's trying to hit on like a, if it's a flash shot, 
like since the trajectory is so flat, trajectory is so flat, um, like the hit rate will act, the accuracy will actually be a lot higher. So yeah, uh, that's that. Um, and it's a total work clone with uh, some fundamental issues that if fixed can potentially be a total war replace well not a replacement like substitute substitute um and if not well yeah um of well, course again this is mostly an overview i have not played the older total war level titles so i'm not sure how this is really compared to the older total wars but this just gives you a brief overview of what the game's current state is at that's it. Bye-bye.